Alright, hello, hello, hello. Um, doing this again. Took a day off, two days off. But no, this is a, this is fun. So it's the weekend this time. It's not the morning, so I'm fully awake. Hopefully, my brain is a little bit more functional now than on past goes at this. Um, but yeah, no need for any kind of preamble. Uh, the one I wanted to do today is called. I've got a whole playlist of these. And some of the ones I want to do are, are like quite long, you know? There's like half an hour, some of the earlier ones. But I think I'll save those for later. Um, those might be best done sitting down. I don't know. Um, I've been enjoying taking walks and doing these, so that's what I'm doing right now. So the one I want to do now is called Play Long Games. Hey friends, today's video I want to talk about playing long games. Now, I think it's pretty well known that compounding, like financial returns, compounding in the in the sense of financial financial returns, pays off a lot in the long run. Where you know, increasing your savings by three percent or five percent or something like that, a little bit every year over decades adds up to a lot because it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies and it's very unintuitive because people aren't good at thinking in terms of exponential you know kind of inc like recursively multiply something i've always wondered about about this phenomenon um of compound gains and interest like how many people actually understand how that works not just like oh you get interest on your money so then the next year you have more money and you get more interest blah, 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 but like w what's the financial system and the mechanisms behind it that make that work i wonder how many people i wonder can you i mean not challenging you um but I wonder how many people fully grasp um, what goes into that phenomenon. But anyway. Big value or numbers, right? And it's one of those things where even when you talk to people about it, they might be, oh yeah, I hadn't considered that. And then they don't think about it further because, you know, it kind of sounds about right, but it doesn't... You know, people return to their old habits of thinking, and our habits of thinking are informed by our experience in day-to-day -day life. And if there's been nothing in our experience that demonstrates the power of exponential growth, then even though it sounds nice, it doesn't feel real, right? And we always tend to default back or return back to what's familiar and what we know physically in the body right like the like, like the you know it's, it's what you can imagine with your hands or you know it's what you see in your bank account for example like you really have to simulate an experience that feels real anyway uh, i wanted to talk about twitter and publishing online and even making these youtube videos right just making stuff online and continually making more and more things is something that I personally believe is extremely valuable and I think that even though there's some people who talk about it online, write about it online, it's still something that most people probably don't relate to or understand because it, I, I believe that if people really understood this then we would all be making stuff all the time and even I myself sometimes wonder what is wrong with me, right? Like, in a sense, like, like, do I myself not understand it? Because I go days without publishing videos, and it doesn't take a lot of time in it. Oh, I thought you were going to be the other way. Wait, so you mean, what is wrong with me when I don't just publish all the time? Not, what is wrong with me? Um, why am I doing this and no one else is doing it? Yeah. Energy and effort to make a video but I tend to want, I tend to have like this perfectionist streak with my videos that makes me feel, oh, you know, I, I kind of want to publish a video today, but I don't really know what I'm going to talk about, so maybe later, maybe 
something. It, the the incentives in my head are not correct. Like I'm imagining something that isn't doesn't correspond with reality. The reality of it is, from what I, I believe is true intellectually, is that I should be publishing at least one video a day, hmm. every day for years, and that, you know, it's almost irrelevant what the quality of the video is, past a certain threshold, right? So I can't be making gibberish noises, or I can't be <laughs> talking bullshit, but as long as I am making an effort to say something that I think is interesting, that will be valuable in ways that I cannot anticipate, I cannot see, I cannot imagine. Like my imagination and anticipation is is limited by what I know and what I've experienced. Yeah, I mean, just thinking about making YouTube videos, like you could make a bunch of YouTube videos that nobody or very few people find or find interesting, but you just keep at it and you keep at it and then one day you make one you know, because whatever you like hit on a topic that's really resonant for people or because you've gotten way better at making videos anyway, and you make one that just takes off, suddenly millions and millions of people see it, and then you have this lo- fucking huge backlog, which is like a long tail, uh, S- uh, I'm probably getting that kind of wrong, but like long tail SEO, right? Like you've you've hit all of the really, really, really niche terms, and then when you hit the big one, suddenly um, all your old videos suddenly get a bunch of attention because everyone wants to know what the hell you're about. And I can try to match, you know, I know that other people have made lots of videos over the years and that doing that gives them a certain power that I can see now, but it's very tempting to think that they are different in some way. You know, it's just... It's, even the way that I'm describing this right now, it's an attempt, and it's not the proper, correct explanation for what's going on. But... Well, before you try to get it right, I just want to say that I can relate, you know, with certainly with like making uh, YouTube videos or something of that nature. Um... I've dabbled in it, and one thing that helps me, and the same thing with blogs, something that helps me, but has never fully made the difference is, you know, uh, you know, you go to someone's YouTube channel, and then you, you, uh, sort it from oldest to newest, so then you see, like, oh yeah, their first video was, whatever, six years ago, ten years ago, and it was pretty unpolished and it does give you a sense of like oh I can do that like if I made one today it would be just like that and it would be fine um but that still doesn't fully get rid of that sense of like oh now they're successful and they're successful because some something about them they're different right not just because they've been doing it but there's something about them which is different so even if I did what I see that they we're doing all the way back then it doesn't fully fully push you over the edge and make you realize that you're really not different I, I guess this is an affirmation to myself that I should be making videos every day and it feels it's challenging partially because the people around me don't understand this the people around me have an even weaker understanding of this than I do that's my belief right I believe that why are they your friends then <laughs> cut them out of your life no, please don't, please don't take, I, I don't know, I tried to make that as satirical sounding as possible, I do not mean that. There's tremendous power in uploading a video every day. Uh, I have some friends who kind of believe this as well, but no, none of them really believe it as, as thoroughly as I do. Again, because if they did, they would be making videos every day, which they don't. So, I have a belief that is you know, deviant from the norm. And holding on to a belief that's deviant from the norm is challenging because your social reality will drag you back to the norm without any malicious intent. It's just, you know, kind of a 
Nobody even needs to try. Nobody even needs to tell you, hey, you shouldn't be publishing videos every day. Like, nobody needs to say that. It's just that nobody around me is also publishing videos every day. And therefore, I don't feel compelled to do it unless I remind myself that I should do it. Right. I, will, I mean, it kind of depends on why you're doing it, right? Like, maybe it's something that you are... Like, if it takes no effort... Um, like, you've probably heard on these recordings, I sniffle all the time. I don't know fucking why I do that. Maybe I've just had allergies all my life. So I don't have to try to do that. So other people's lack of doing that doesn't drag me back into their reality. But if I were, like, trying to go out of my way to develop a habit that no one else is doing and, like, trying to put effort into that, then, yeah, definitely. Like, why am I doing this? No one else does it. Um, you know, what benefits am I going to really get, especially if they're long-term benefits that, that don't accrue for a while? Um, and then depending on how you think about yourself, you know, internal world, you could be like, wow, what's wrong with me? What, do I have something, am I missing something? Am I crazy? What, like, clearly no one else sees things as I see them. Why am I? doing this silly thing so yeah I, I, probably it comes from probably it comes uh, it depends on where you're starting from for like cause you did you know those word vomits for so long I don't know well enough the story there to say you know if you were if it was kind of like almost compulsive for you but I can speak for myself and say like I basically did the same thing for many years uh, with the volume of journaling that I was doing, though I, it wasn't publicly published. But for me, that was compulsive. Like, yeah, no one else did that, but I couldn't help myself from doing it. So the fact that others weren't didn't really change anything about my habits in that area. Right, and reminding myself is uh, it's a game of managing my own psychology. It's a game of managing my environment, right? It's about I should have, you know, pictures in my room of people who are prolific to remind myself of the joy and beauty of being prolific, right? I think um, I have Twitter threads about this, like, and that does kind of uh, keep me motivated and... I sh saying this out loud, I realize I should be doing it even more. It's kind of radical, you know, in, in, in my opinion. Like, again, people might dismiss it and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? But mm, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> the, the, the only thing that really matters to me is that I adequately manifest my own understanding. And, you know, could I be wrong? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but, uh, maybe. I, I think if, I, if I'm wrong about, you know, it's, and wrongness and rightness is not a binary thing. It's like what parts of your model are wrong and what parts of your model are correct. And, you know, I think it's correct that to do great things or to, to you know, create something very valuable, you have to be creating a lot. Is that enough? Probably not. There's probably other variables that I have not understood or considered. But the point is, by continuing to do it, you expose yourself to the opportunity to learning one of the things that you don't know. And I have to spend today working on my book, so I'm going to end this video here. But I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to psych myself up to make more videos more often and invite more people to chat and hang out. And, you know, I tweeted earlier that a, dozen, a couple of dozen friends, or even just a dozen friends who are committed to tweeting well for 30 years can change the world. And again, maybe change the world is like a very loaded sentence or it's a very, you know, different people have different ideas of what that means. But, I mean, that's shorthand for saying can do a tremendous, um, can have a tremendous amount of influence and impact that they cannot see or imagine when they're starting out. Because they can't see all the people who aren't in the room who will show up when they show up every day. Yeah, I mean, just to give my own concrete example, obviously I've been on Twitter way less time than you and been far less prolific, but <coughs> um, there was a thread that I wrote, I don't know, like a year ago, something, maybe more. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. 
Oh, it's not coming. Um, yeah, there's a thread that I wrote, like, maybe a year and a half ago or something like that, about my frustrations with marketing. And, um, you know, I, I'll, like, link people to it sometimes just as... Because it's, like, a good intro to, to where my head's at or where my head has been at with marketing and my point of view on it. But, um... It's never gotten a ton of attention or anything like that, but just the other day, somebody uh, tweeted me and said that the this thread had done, like, changed their mind, like, 180 degrees about marketing, you know? And I saw that, and, like, I didn't respond for a whole day, because I was like, whoa, shit, like, it kind of blew me away. Like, I didn't know what to say, like, thank you, or, like... I'm glad, or, I don't know, you know, but it was just this crazy experience to realize, like, wow, this thing I wrote a long time ago, um, can have such a big impact, you know, and it was literally just one thread, it wasn't, like, the volume of things that I had written over time, it was just this one set of tweets completely changed this person's point of view, or at least opened the door for their mind to change hopefully in a positive way I don't know I'll have to follow up and see about that but but yeah I can vouch for what you're saying is what I'm saying right so it's it's kind of a chicken or egg thing but you can you can you can make it happen you know and uh, again I, I don't know if there's, there's no point trying to argue it too much in a single video rather the argument is demonstrated by continuing to make more and more videos because now I have like a few months ago I had like a thousand something subscribers now I have two thousand something soon it'll be three then four five ten twenty fifty hundred I do believe that I will get to 100k subscribers eventually. There will be things that I have to do along the way, right? I have to polish the videos, I have to make it, you know, these videos are too long, or they are not snappy enough, whatever, I'll figure that out later on. That's not, that's not such a big deal. The hardest part is managing my own psychology and making sure that what I'm saying is, is useful. And so, in a way, these are all rehearsals. This is all me practicing. I really love uh, what you're saying there. I guess it's, it doesn't surprise me that you're saying it, but it's super well put that... You know, all of the, like, and it's very different than a lot of people think about things in general and certainly think about marketing. Just that, like, all of the fine points, all the technicalities of marketing about making sure your videos are engaging enough or, like, clickable enough or all these things, um, those are, those are, like, the minutia. The hard part, the hard part and the really high leverage part is... What you, what you said, the managing your own psychology, like, that's not a afterthought, like, that's <laughs> number one, and the degree to which you do that, and the degree to do which you do it well, will, everything flows from that, so, I just love that you said it, and I just think you said it so well. The same, right? This is me playing my scales or whatever. Just, just getting used to the sound of my voice, getting used to my rhythms, getting used to my systems of communication. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with this, and I'm, I'm not even impressed with this, right? Uh, it's, it's a work in progress. But you know, I know that doing this, I know that uh, there are a bunch of people who watch who don't comment and don't uh, like or subscribe or whatever, and. They are on the fence about making stuff, right? Doing, like someone tweeted me yesterday saying something like, uh, I want to write blog posts, but I don't know what I want to write about, and it's been written a million times before. I'm like, so what? You know, like, that has been true of every great thing that's ever been done. And you, doesn't, you don't need to be great. You just need to do stuff. You know, it's, it's, the, the, frame, the frames people use are so self-limiting and self-regulating. And uh, you could just as easily, well, I say it's easily, but in, in my point, from my point of view, you could reframe it in a way that's like, I just want to make stuff and make lots and lots of stuff and see what happens, right? It's a, it's a way of exploring the world. It's a way of, of discovering things. It's interesting. It's cool. Done. Oh, what happened? Hey, friends, I know I haven't made it. Oh, I guess that was it. Hold on. Was that it?
that's no no way that maybe my internet just cut out. Am I still recording? I think so. Yeah. Shoot. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It's telling me I don't have a connection. Maybe if I walk back to where I was, then it will come back. Oh, hey friends, okay. today's video I want to talk so. about playing long games. Now, Let's I see. think... How cool is this? <laughs> it's like we're having a conversation, hey, is... but I can just pause you and rewind you. <laughs> it's useful. And so in a way, these are all rehearsals. This is all me practicing, right? This is me playing my scales or whatever. Just, just getting used to the sound of my voice, getting used to my rhythms, getting used to my systems of communication. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with this. And I'm, I'm not even impressed with this, right? Uh, it's, it's a work in progress. But, you know, I know that doing this, I know that uh, there are a bunch of people who watch who don't comment and don't uh, like or subscribe or whatever. And they are on the fence about making stuff, right? Doing, like someone who tweeted me yesterday saying something like, uh, I want to write blog posts, but I don't know what I want to write about, and it's been written a million times before. I'm like, so what? You know, like, that has been true of every great thing that's ever been done. And you, doesn't, you don't need to be great. You just need to do stuff. You know, it's, it's, the, the, frame, the frames people use are so self-limiting and self-regulating. And uh, you could just as easily, well, I say it's easily, but in, in my point, from my point of view, you could reframe it in a way that's like, I just want to make stuff and make lots and lots of stuff and see what happens. Right? It's, a, it's a way of exploring the world. It's a way of, of discovering things. It's interesting. It's cool. Done. Oh, maybe you did. Okay. Cool. Well, that was that. Um, yeah. I was, um, interesting. You stayed, you stayed such on topic about the publishing aspect. I was kind of thinking that you would expand more generally into the topic of playing long games, but, but who, whatever, who cares? Um, Yeah, Twitter is such an interesting example of it. YouTube also. Just uh, the more you put out... I mean, there are so many, you know, like, YouTube channels. So many YouTube channels that I'll discover in, you know, in arenas that I find interesting. I'll come across somebody. And then, you know, maybe the first video that I see from them is like, something new that they published recently but then if I like it I'll just go and watch like every single thing that they've ever put out there you know so it's like if you were the one creating that then suddenly you just have somebody who watched every single thing you did and you wouldn't even have uh, expected that so like you were saying these compounding gains of like you publishing for a long time and you put put stuff out there um, till something hits someone new finds you that really freaking loves you loves what you do loves your perspective and suddenly you have a fucking massive fan who just goes through and gobbles up all of your work you know and that just happens sort of naturally because you've been at it for so long and probably um, you know when if we're talking about YouTube still not just probably but very concretely my experience has been if I find somebody whose work that I like if they do have a massive backlog I'm far more likely to just subscribe because clearly they are consistent with it, you know? It's not just like, oh, they made some videos once on this topic, in which case I probably wouldn't subscribe. I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll add 
the video to a playlist, but I wouldn't subscribe necessarily. I certainly wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't like feel any investment towards that that person or that creator. Um, but yeah, uh, but if they have a hundred videos on the topic or a hundred videos on the things that I find interesting, then absolutely, I'm a fan. I'm gonna subscribe. And furthermore, uh, if I really, really vibe with their point of view, then that person, that creator, is far more likely to have the ability to open my eyes to new things in the future that I might not expect to hear about from them, you know, because I feel like, okay, we're on the same page, we see things similarly, and then, okay, one day, that person publishes a video on um, something I've never thought about before. Okay, screw it, I trust them, I'm gonna listen. Or maybe they say, oh, I've totally changed my mind about something. Again, I trust them, I'm gonna listen. But if it was just some nobody with no background, uh, no backlog, you know, why would I care? So, just some more uh, data points to whoever's listening, to myself, about the value of publishing consistently. You never know what's going to happen.